Well, I say enough is enough. And even if the odds are against us, ask yourself the question, what will you be able to tell your children, your grandchildren, when they ask you, what did you do to stop what is coming? Our political class is out of control. Over the past few years, there's been a steady assault on our civil liberties, undertaken not by some minority fringe party, but by our political establishment, by the people who are paid and elected to represent our interests. These are the very people who have been undertaking a steady assault on our civil liberties. Let's start with Europe. The European Commission, led by President Ursula von der Leyen, has enthusiastically embraced a number of policies that very clearly militate against the rights of citizens. One of those policies was, of course, the vaccine passport scheme, which made it impossible, or at least made it very difficult, for European citizens to travel if they didn't accept a particular vaccine, an experimental vaccine. Another pet project of the European Commission has, of course, been the Digital Services Act, which greatly increases the power of the European Commission to pressure social media companies into policing speech, including what is deemed to be disinformation, a notoriously slippery category which very clearly lends itself to political and ideological manipulation. My home country, Ireland, is by no means exempt from this steady assault on civil liberties. We've seen very recently the passage of a hate speech bill in the Irish Parliament, which would enable the government to monitor speech and prosecute speech that they deemed to be hateful, even before that speech was uttered or published. So it, the wording of the bill suggests that speech that is even on your computer that could be deemed hateful would be prosecutable. This is an in extraordinary intrusion into the private sphere and represents probably the most serious threat to freedom of speech in Ireland since the foundation of the state in 1922. And if we just hop across to the United Kingdom, with the Hancock files, we discovered that the former health secretary, Matt Hancock, was intent on scaring the pants off everyone about the next COVID variant. This clearly shows that the UK government was in the business of scaremongering and manipulating citizens into compliance with their pandemic policies rather than engaging with them as rational adults. And now if we skip across the Atlantic and have a look at what's happening in the United States, the CDC has apparently renewed the COVID vaccination requirement for incoming travelers who are not US citizens. What possible rational basis could there be for such a policy, given the fact that the vaccine is not successful at suppressing the transmission of the virus, and given the fact that its effects, whatever effects it does have, are relatively short-lived, and given the fact that the United States has just declared that the pandemic emergency is over. It seems like an utterly irrational and disproportionate type of policy that will cause huge disruption to travelers and that amounts to a form of immoral coercion for those who have family in the United States or those who have important business to do in the United States and are faced with the dilemma, do I take this vaccine under duress and thus get into the United States or do I maintain the integrity of my health choices and thus be excluded from the United States. So let's take a step back. What do all of these decisions have in common? What they have in common is that they show us that the people who are authorized to make decisions on our behalf and in our interests, the people who represent the interests of citizens, are engaged in a steady assault on our civil liberties. 
they're deconstructing our civil liberties and leaving us in an increasingly vulnerable position vis-a-vis -vis the state. They're strengthening the powers of the state and reducing the guarantees that we have of protection. So we need to push back hard so that the people ruling over us and making these absurd and destructive decisions realize that they cannot abridge our freedoms with impunity, that there will be consequences for their careers and that their life will become uncomfortable if they engage in these kinds of assaults on our freedoms. Now, let me be clear. What I'm calling for is peaceful resistance. I'm calling for civil disobedience. I'm calling for political mobilization. I'm calling for citizens to make their voices heard and to realize that this is not just a flash in the pan. It's not just an issue of the pandemic or an overreaction to the pandemic. It's the, the steady onward march of technocracy and of hubris and arrogance on the part of those who lead, who think that they could substitute their own judgments about the public interest and their own interests for those of us, the citizens. Well, I say enough is enough. And even if the odds are against us, ask yourself the question, what will you be able to tell your children, your grandchildren, when they ask you, what did you do to stop what is coming?